Hello, Facebook Live. Um, I'm actually going to talk about uh, 1 Corinthians 13, which if you're very, very familiar with the Bible, it talks about love, right? So I'm going to read this 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 9. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. So, God be loved. There's different types of love, uh, biblical love, loves. One is phileo. One is the agape love. The agape love is an unconditional love. It's the spontaneous love of God. It's divine. It, it is more eternal than gives. Is that it says in Romans eight. It says is that. Nothing could separate us from the love of God. And so and so the nine so the nine ingredients of divine love of agape love is it's it says that it suffers long, so it's patient. Love is patient and that that's love passive. It's it does not hurry. Love is in no hurry. It suffers long. It bears, believes, and hopes, and there's all things. Does it say some things? No, it says all things. So even if your friend betrays you, you still love because it bears all things, right? And so then the second characteristic of love is kindness. It, that means it's love in action, not just in words and uh, not just in words. And so it never acts rashly, insultly, not inconsistent. Sometimes we're inconsistent when we love people. It's conditional. Our love is based on conditions. Humans love on a conditional basis because we're so selfish. So if you do this, I'll love you. If you do that, I'll love you. That's not God's love. That's not true love. That's actually manipulation and selfishness and pride. And so love is not manipulative. And so it says that it's not puffed up or proud, meaning pride, like it doesn't boast, right? And so then the third characteristic is generosity. It's love and competition. It's not envious or jealous. Sometimes we um, get jealous, but that is selfishness, and love isn't jealous. Sometimes, like this is um, okay. So I'm gonna do one scenario. Okay, so what if you're praying? Cause so one of your heart's desires is that you're praying for a wife or a husband or a godly one, right? So, anyways, so what are you gonna do in the situation if God blesses? Your friend, your best friend with a wife or a husband, like God is going to test you in that area of your life. Are you going to be jealous? Or if you truly love your friend with a God you love, you're going to be happy. You're going to rejoice for her. And if you start feeling jealous, is that it's a heart condition that you're dealing with on the inside. It's, um, it's understandable that you're feeling jealous, but still is that if you're feeling jealous, we have to go to God and so that the love of God could penetrate your heart to love your friend that has, that's blessed. And so um, that's another thing. Number four is humility. So it's love and hiding. It's, it doesn't parade. It has no airs, works, then retires. So love is full of humility. Like I was saying, God actually humbled himself to the point, to the death of the cross because he loved us and made himself nothing to be a servant. It says in Hebrews, that's how much love 
、um, he has for us. And so the courtesy, it's courtesy, it's love in society. It does not behave unseemingly. Always polite, at home with all classes. That means love that is at home with with the high class, the middle class, the low class. The、um, so it doesn't favor. Love does not favor. Uh, people, does it doesn't favor? It doesn't show no favoritism. So it's never rude or discourteous. So、uh, discourteous. So unselfishness. Number six is unselfishness. It's the love and incense. It's never selfish, sour or bitter. Seeks only good of others. Is that? We have to have pure motives, and if we really truly, truly love God and His people, is that we're gonna want the good. We want that other people to be blessed. We want them to、um, to accomplish the will of God for their lives, to see God's plan、um, that He has for them, which is good, to prosper in their lives. And we should always be happy for our brother, our sister that's being prosperous in the Lord. And so then it says is that it does not retaliate. So if a person hurts you, is that it doesn't it doesn't try to take revenge. Love does not it's not revengeful. So you so God so it's like this is that revenge is not ours but it's the Lord's. He's the God of vengeance, and so that we have to remind ourselves is that. Is that is that if someone hurts us, we can't get a we can't go and get back at them because that's not the love of God. The love of God, what it says, love seven times seventy. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Pray for them. And so we can't we can't if we're true Christians that really love God and we know like we have experienced the love of God for ourselves is that we will not want to retaliate. Like okay, some of us were not perfect, so some of us not all the times were perfect. So some of us are gonna want to retaliate, but it's just because you're hurt. But if you're in that position when you're hurt, you have to go to God first, share with God, and then He will help you. He will heal the wound because He's close to the brokenhearted, right?、Um, and so He'll heal your wound that. Is、um, that's in your heart, and then you go and talk to your brother in in a in a loving way, not a forceful way, not in a way that's aggressive. Love isn't aggressive. It does, it's not easily provoked. You can't easily. So it's not angry. Like love is not angry. So it doesn't seek revenge. So number seven says good temper is that love and disposition never irritated. Never resentful. How many times do we get irritated by people, by even other Christians? They irritate us, right? So, so us is that we can't be irritated. I mean, we can, but like we have to go to God. Like I said, it's all about you and relationship with God. Is that is that? Thank God, God never gets irritated with us, right? Is that thank God he never like he never gives up on us. He never says, "Oh, today you're irritating me, daughter. I can't handle you." So guess what? Is that God never does that. He's never irritated. And even if you are praying at the same、uh, for the same thing, if you're if you're being persistent in your prayers, asking God for the same thing, He does not get irritated with your persistence in your praying. And Sometimes you think, oh, here we go, God. God's gonna keep hearing this prayer request, and she's probably irritated. Not irritated. That's just the devil lying to you. Okay. Um. And so, like, so, and it's never resentful. Some of us we could hold grudges against our brother and our against our sister just because of our, of they hurt us. Which I get it. But in Proverbs nineteen eleven it says. A 
person's wisdom yields great patience and it is one's glory to overlook an offense so when we overlook an offense we feel victorious like in christ because we're acting christ like christ is trying to take us from glory to glory meaning he's trying to uh, we we need to become christ like more every single day and that means a greater a capacity um, of love for others. That's what love is. And so is that number eight is righteousness. It's love and conduct. It, it hates sin. Is that love hates sin but always rejoices with the truth. So if you love God, is that you're going to hate sin. And that's the other thing is that if you really want to repent and get rid of the sin, you got to hate it. Is that you, you can't love sin. You, you got to hate it. Hate it with a passion because it destroys people. And, and so you got to hate it. Okay? Like, hate it. Okay? And it says, never glad when others go wrong. So, when, when, so... If someone hurts you and then they like, oh, and then you say, and then you say like, oh, they get, they got what they deserve. Like, that's not Christ like. Christ does not have a mentality like that. That's all selfishness and that's all bad. And no, that's not love. It, even if you got hurt by a guy or got hurt by a best friend or something, like, you don't do that. Like, that's, that's not Christ like. And so then it says, always gladdened by goodness to others. So it always rejoices with people. And it says, always slow to expose. <laughs> okay, so with this one. So what if a leader hurts you in church or a pastor hurts you? Are you going to be slow to expose pastor's faults, pastor's uh, flaws? Uh, or are you going to bleed on other people and gossip? Are you going, uh, like, okay, so I'm going to share this. Is that Noah, when he was drunk, is that, I think two of his sons covered his nakedness because he was their man, he was the man of God that, that provided for them, that loved them. And so if they covered up his faults. Is that they didn't never expose Noah's fault. He, they, they didn't see other people. They didn't let other people see their faults. And so we have to um, love our pastor, love our church leaders like that because we're so quick to ex we want to expose them. We want to blast them all over the all over the world. But that's not Christ like. And it says it always eagers to believe the best. Is that we have to believe for the best for other people. And it's always hopeful, always enduring. Enduring means love stays. It doesn't go, it, 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 it stays through the thick and thin. And so that's what true love is. And so another nine, the ninth characteristic is sincerity. It's love and profession. It's never boastful or conceited, not a hypocrite. We can't say we love a person with our uh, our mouth and then with our action we do something different. We gossip about them. Like, what? Uh, yeah, I think you got your definition of love twisted up. <laughs> but it's always honest. It's like, so it's always honest. It doesn't lie. So... Even in a godly relationship, is that if you really love the person, is that you wouldn't want to hurt them, right? So you got, so if you love God, you wouldn't want to hurt them. So, like, be honest. And it says, leaves no impression, but what is strictly tr true. Love is the truth. The truth shall set you free. And then it says, never self-assertive. Does not blaze out in passionate anger. So love is that we have to deal with situations. So as Christians is that we can't. This says do not let the sun go down when you're angry. So is that. And we can't blaze out with a passionate anger to our brother or to our sister. And um, do that. That's not good. And it says nor brood over wrongs. 
so it doesn't meditate on the wrong that a person does to you. It's always just. It's always joyful and truthful. And love knows how to be silent. So it does not argue. So so basically is that so so if a person so if you have a confrontation with a Christian brother or Christian sister or worldly person, guess what? Is that there's a time to talk. Is that if you love the person, you know how to be silent and hear them out. Like that's just true love. It doesn't just all of a sudden try to defend itself and that selfishness. Like you you have to have time to hear the other person out. It says it's full of trust. It's always present. And so in Luke six, twenty seven to thirty six it says uh, right here. So it says but to you who are listening I say love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love them, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect your payment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Is that if we lend money to a person, it says is that we can't expect anything back. Is because we love them. We want we have the love of God, so we love them enough not to expect to expect any payment back and so then it says then if you do this then your reward will be great and you'll be children of the most high because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked be merciful just as your father is merciful and it also says is that if if you want to be forgiven is that you have to forgive your brother and sister is if you want God to forgive you, and it says, if you have any offense before prayer, so if you have any offense in your heart toward a brother or sister, is that you have to repent and you have to forgive so that God could hear your prayers. And so, and so that's a thing. Is that it says right? So then, let's turn to Romans twelve. I'm already on it. <laughs> that's a God right there. Romans twelve. 14 to 21. Okay, so it says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's God's wrath. For it, it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what does this tell us? Is that if we show our enemies unconditional love, is that it says in doing this, you will heap 
burning coals on his head. That's like revenge right there. That's straight up revenge. I bet, like, like, come on, somebody, like, right there. It look, and it says, look, okay. So it says, he burning coals. This may refer to an Egyptian tradition of carrying a pan of burning charcoal on one's head as a public act of repentance. By referring to this proverb, Paul was saying that we should treat our enemies with kindness, kill them with kindness, so that they'll become ashamed and turn from their sins. The best way to get rid of enemies is to turn them into friends. Oh my God, come on now. And it says, okay, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet, man. Shoot. Look, okay, well, watch this. It says that. So, if these verses summarize the core of Christian living, living, if we love someone the way Christ loved, we'll be willing to forgive. If we ever experience God's grace, we will pass it on to others. And remember, grace is undeserved favor. By giving an enemy a drink, we're not excusing his misdeeds. We're recognizing him, forgiving him, and loving him in spite of his sins, just as Christ did for us. And no servant is greater than its master. So we are servants. God is our master. That means we got to go through persecution and stuff. So is that, so is that we have to befriend our enemies. Is that it breaks the recycle of retaliation because if you're a true Christian, you'll not want to retaliate because you have the love of God in you. And the only way you get the love of God in you is if you spend time with Jesus and then the Holy Spirit will give you the capacity to love, will give you the capacity to love your enemies. And so, like, we got to remember what God did for us. So when we betrayed him, when we when we when we chose sin over Jesus, we betrayed him, we spat in his face, we whipped him with our sins. So if we're not greater than Jesus, then God expects us to do that. Especially like 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 this. Like this is that Jesus died for us, right? Even though yet we were sinners. In Romans it says that. So even when we didn't love him, he still chose us. Even when it, we did, we love sin more than him, he still chose us. So we need to have the same love for our brothers and sisters. We gotta turn the other cheek. And like, and so mentioning more is that Jesus chose Judas, the one that betrayed him, but he still chose him after he knew that in the very end, he's going to betray him. It says in John 13, I mean, it says that Jesus even, so in John, so in John 13, verse 1 to 5 and verse 21 to 27 is that Jesus was washing the disciples feet, right? To, to show him what a servant is to be like. But anyways, Judas was in the room. Now, Jesus already knew that Jesus, Judas was going to betray him. But what did... So, so what did Jesus do? He Even though he still chose him, he still loved Judas. Is that he went the extra mile. And he washed his enemy's feet. He washed his feet. Now... How many of us can do that? Not um, like go the extra mile to forgive a person who hurt us. Like who can do that? Like Jesus can. And you know what? With God, all things are possible. That means is that if God can do it and God can give me the strength, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means that I can love my enemies. I can show them the love of God. And so like, like, and so then it says, so then in First John uh, chapter 4, 20 to 21, it says, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. Oh, somebody got roasted. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, he, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And the commandment we have from him 
that he that he who loves God must love his brother also. So if you're a true Christian and, and you say you love God, but you then you say, no, I'm, I don't want to forgive this person uh, who hurt me. Um, the Bible calls you a liar, calls us a liar. That's important for me, though, too. Not just you guys, but for me. It applies to my life, too. So if I don't, I'm not, not I'm willing to forgive just as Christ has forgiven me is that I'm a liar. I'm a liar because God said so. And so we got an, another thing that we have to um, see is that love covers a multitude of sin. Is that God's love covered our sins. And so is that if you want to love a genuine, like ge genuinely love a person, is that you're going to love them. Love them till you die. And that then they're going to see the love of God outpouring in your life. And they'll be like, what? I don't deserve your love. Why did? Why are you being so nice to me? Is that it's going to draw them to the love of God if you do that. And that's why it says it, it, if you love like that, is that it proves our sonship. It proves our sonship to God. That we are children of God. We are the real ones. Be if we do that and so it's good stuff and then so and then like i said though is that proverbs nineteen eleven, a person's wisdom yields patience what is love love is patient love is kind right so if we have true love we're gonna have patience that's the fruit of the spirit galatians 6 so or Galatians 5. But it says, It is one's glory to overlook an offense. Many people, many Christians fail the test. So, I'm talking about, I'm going to be talking about Christians. So, if a pastor hurts you, if a leader hurts you, okay, is that how many of us, well, the first instinct is that we're going to bleed on other people and we're going to share, um, our hurt with other people and 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 that we're gonna um and and that we they're gonna we're we're gonna run away from the church leader that hurt us or run away from the pastor that that hurt us or we're gonna chew him out like or we're gonna leave his church and then we're just gonna gossip about him and all that stuff, right? So people it's real life. People do that. Like um to be honest, people do that. Is that so? Me, I got through that test, but the only reason why I passed that test, it was not me. My flesh, if I was the works of the flesh, would not permit you to overlook an offense when a person hurts you. The work of the flesh would not allow you to do that. The only way that you can love unconditionally is if. You have that relationship with the Father. If you have the relationship with the Father, the Spirit will empower you during those tough times to overlook a pastor's offense, to overlook your church leader's offense. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to do so. And so it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit. So the Spirit will empower you to overlook an offense if you stick through the process. You have to stick through the process. And yes... I've went through that recently, but guess what? I stuck it out. I went, I confronted, and God met me. God met me, and I'm healed. And guess what? I have no beef toward the person. I have nothing against the person. Because ultimately, is that is that sometimes we get a bad look, a, a bad perspective of our pastor or a bad perspective of our leader when they do something wrong. Is that, look, is that pastor, leader, is they're not God. They're not perfect. They're man just like us. They're imperfection. We have all kinds of imperfections, including pastor. And so that we have to, as Christians, we cannot, even though they they have a higher hot office in Christianity, is that we have to lower our standards, not lower our standards, but like like we have to say that pastor is a man, 
So you're gonna get hurt. Uh, the leader is is gonna hurt you. But the thing, the goal that God's trying to teach you is to love. Is to love. Is to love. That's the main thing. And so, is that and and it's a test from God. He's testing you. Is that God allows certain stuff, certain people to hurt us, but it's a test. He's trying to mature your Christian faith because he wants to use you at a greater capacity. And in order for you to grow is that you have to go through that betrayal. You have to go through that. That's just the God's process for your life. And But once you overlook that offense, once you get a, 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 a true victory, by, by overlooking that offense is that you're gonna be able to to um, to be used at a greater capacity uh, for for other people God's gonna be able to uh, grow your platform and and so like we have to and and so the main thing is that we could say that we love a person is that faith without works is dead so is that we could say all we want all day long. But if we have, but if we don't have love in action, then no, it's not gonna work. And so that's why John, John says in First John three eighteen, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What, what did we just study? Is that? It's through our actions. People say we could, you could say you love God with all your heart, but if you don't show it with your actions, uh, then it proves you wrong, right? It's the same thing with people. If you love God, you love people. So that means is that is that you have to love, just love. And so then is that love covers a multitude of sins. So. Is that that's what true love is. So even when people hurt us, guess what? Is that did God did God so did God give up on us when we were sinners? Did God give up on us? Did God was irritated was with us? Did God say, you know what, I can no longer deal with this crazy person? Like, did God give up on us? No. He actually said that I will remember no, uh, I will remember your sins no more. So why is it so hard? It's because the selfish nature that we have in our hearts. And, and so like, you guys, you like, you guys, we have to love. Like, we are Christians. We are our part. You are my brother. You are my sister in Christ. And I love you. And 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 if we want to be forgiven, we have to forgive other people. And, and like, also is that it says that, that God's going to bless us if we do that. And God knows our hearts. And so it's a good word. Like Tim Rebauer said, good word. So... Like I said, is that we have to be patient with people. It says in God's word is that we have to make room for our leaders to make mistakes. We have got, like our leaders go through a lot. And we have to pray for our leaders. If you love a person, you'll pray for them. And love never gives up. So God never gave up on us. So we have to preach. We have to love other people. For God so gave love the world he gave. We have to give our time to people. We have to give the love. We have to give everything to people. And so that's part of my Bible study. But uh, actually, I'm going to start working on a new one right now. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys. So like God, like Jesus went to the cross for us. He loved, even though people spat at him. He loved. Even when people came against him. And he was saying he, he was blaspheming. Like. He loved. So why is it hard for us to love? And to forget? Like we have to. Like sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into this. But like. You have to love bro. You just got to love bro. Love your enemies bro. Like God's going to reward you for it. Even if it says that in the Bible. I just read it to you. 
So like, and did God give up on us when we were sinners? No. So why are we going to give up on his people? Those are his people. They're not ours. Those, those are his. So we got to love. Love your brother. A uh, compliment. I mean, give something like uh, if um bless your brother and sister like bless them with the coffee or or food or um something or uh, or a ticket or something I don't know bless them not with a ticket man bless them with a convention ticket to figure out each event so that they know the love of God <laughs> but I'm just saying but for real guys love each other because God is love right like we all love each other we're all. Big, a big happy family, and we're all gonna go to heaven. No, well, some of us are gonna go to heaven, to be honest. But I'm just saying, like, us who are faithful and pure and true is that we're gonna have big mansions. We're gonna have, like, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be lit for God. Come on, shoot, streets of gold. Oh my God. But love.